the minutes of the regular meeting of February 25th, 2019. Please vote aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that passes. Uh, the next item is uh, item three on our agenda, which is the consent calendar. Uh, and I would like to do this all as one item, unless there's any items that anybody would like to pull off the agenda. Sure. Yeah, there's all I'm suffering. I don't, I'm assuming that this one's on consent. It's item A6. Okay. We can pull that one off. Sure. And then, um, And then just an explanation from item A12. A12. Um, all right. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they want to take off the uh, consent agenda? Did you say A6, Ottoman um, Braithway? Uh, well, I have A6. Yes, yes. Yes, he did not say that one. A6 and then also uh, A12. And A12. I think that's it for me, just A6. Okay. Um, so do I have a motion for approval of all the items on the consent agenda with the exception of items A6 and A12? I'm, I'm just... Sure. I'm just wondering if at least the um, at least the the item should not be read so that people know what we're doing. I mean, I I understand that we don't you know the funding sources blah blah blah, but I it just seems to me that the identity of the item should be read. I don't sure. know um, what does our legal. <clears throat> you mean for the items that I'm holding? Pardon me. No, uh, I mean. Are you saying that you're not going to read the yeah, identity? Uh, uh, no, that uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, so, so typically, if we're going over something off a of consent, I think it would read the same way as if we were at full consent, Alderman Rainey. So when he wouldn't read the item, and then we would we would read it immediately after the consent <laughs> agenda is read. I, I misunderstood. I thought he was going to say, I move the entire consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. I think that, that is what he said. That is what I was going to do. And then we're going to read them at the council so to avoid the redundancy. Oh, but, no, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. But if sorry. you would prefer, I'm I, happy. Yeah, I would. The, I don't, I would. Pleasure I don't of the council. Have, the, I don't have a problem getting into the weeds because I don't think you should, but I think we should read at least, like, for example, A4 contract with Chicagoland paving for Lovelace Park. Tennis yes. court. Just the title. Period. Yes. Sure. Um, I would I would be supportive of that. And if that was not clear. No, right. uh, yeah, I mean um, let's go ahead and do it that way then. Uh, so here we go, everybody. The consent <laughs> agenda consists of item A5, a contract with landscape concepts management for Green Bay Road landscape maintenance. That's for action. Item A6 has been removed. Uh, item A7 is a contract with Visu Sewer of Illinois LLC for the 2019 CIPP sewer rehabilitation contract A project. Item A8, a sole source purchase of hot mix asphalt from Builders Asphalt. Item A9 is a sole source contract for purchase of concrete and flowable fill with Ozinga Ready Mix Inc. Item A12 has been removed. Item A13 is the 2019 non-park special events for approval. Uh, I could, I just have a correction for that. So sure. can I just make it? Absolutely. Just let me, just, Enjoy. I know that's not. Floor is yours. Uh, but it, for the uh, Brummel Park Concert and Food Truck Fest, it's the wrong time. It should be 5 o'clock, not 7 o'clock start time. That's all. All right. Carry uh, on. That is noted. All right. Uh, item A14 is Resolution 22R19, a nine-month lease for Studio 109 at Noise Cultural Arts Center. Item A15 is Resolution 23R19, nine-month lease for Studio B12 at the Noise Cultural Arts Center. Item A16 is Resolution 17R19, a one-year lease agreement for office space at the Lorraine H. Morton Civic Center. Item A17 is Resolution 24R19, a one-year lease agreement for the apartment located at 1223 Simpson Street. And uh, item A19 is Ordinance 19019, the sale of surplus property fleet vehicles for introduction. Uh, that is the consent agenda. I have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Uh, so let's return to uh, item A6, uh, Alderman Braithwaite. Uh, do you want me to move it and then ask my question, Alderman? Certainly. I'd like to move item A6, the contract with uh, Clean Slate Chicago LLC for the 2019 mowing services. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? Well, so I have a question for our staff. Alderman Braithwaite. Somebody will step up. Long time no see. How are you? Good. Good. So, <clears throat> un unless I'm missing something, for me, th this seems like an easy enough contract where we would attract more local landscapers. So, to be honest, unless I'm looking back, the one was uh, Fazita. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna butcher that name. I'm just curious. Do you have any explanation why we didn't have more local contractors bidding on this? Uh, I really don't have an explanation for that other than we reached out to <laughs> all of the local contractors and it was jointly bid with the village of Skokie in 2017. Okay. And th these are the only people that responded. Interesting. Okay. Um, do you have a list of all the local folks that you, Tepic is one that does our summer mm -hmm. lawn care? Just, I, I've got a list that we that we sent out, we invited people to bid. Yes, I do have that. I, I would, I would love to, to see that if you could forward it to my sure. between now sure. and council. And I guess, as, you know, I say this to, to all staff, I think these these bids, we don't have a policy in place yet, but it, it does make sense because we have local contractors that I would like to see more local participation. And I know that that's gonna be my second question with uh, item A12 again. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, uh, Sarah, there, I think. Uh, Alderman Fleming. Um, so I also share Alderman Braithwaite's concern, but my other question, and I mean, I know it's 2017 budget, but did this result, how much um, money did this save us, and did we lose any city staff as a result of, out, of um, outsourcing this work? We did not lose any city staff, and um, they're just reassigned to more technical uh, job tasks within the Greenways division. So it didn't really save us any money technically because we still kept the same amount of people. They just did other work instead of mowing. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alderman Rainey. So in looking at the bids, I see the bids for all the um, bidders for 2017. And I thought I read the whole document. For 2018, for 2019, did we get bids from anybody else? No, I just solicited a new price for 2019. For, for, just from, for the one bidder. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's Because that's as I, I noted here, that, that their, even their price in 2019 is still low, less than the than 2017 bids right, from the other 2017, three. 2017, I see that, yeah. yeah. It would have seemed the, maybe you should have given the Evanston guy at least a chance. I, I mean, if we I threw out the highest and we threw out the lowest, then we're right there, yeah, right? Well, and I think there have been, I don't like to micromanage stuff like this, but I remember once with the, I think it was the extermination contract. We saw a really good sweet price and through no fault of anyone, we went with the cheap price and then we ended up coming back with the vendor who had a good track record. Yeah, but I don't think this is the same I thing. Said again, I said again, I said you can't compare. For us right, for right, while. right. Yeah. I don't think it's the same thing. I think, yeah, I mean, he's done a good even job if for you us. go with the 5%, there's like a 5% cushion. It gets us a little bit closer. Well, spring is sprung. I think, yeah. I think we need to go with this now, but absolutely next year we've got to go out and, and, and bid this whole thing. I can do that. Yeah. And by the way, congratulations for going out and examining those trees as Thank a you. volunteer. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. Uh, there's been a motion and a second. Uh, so all in favor of approval of the mowing contract, uh, item A6, uh, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right. With the good. understanding that we are going to get that local list. Absolutely. Yeah. Paul, I, I'm. Ex my request is to see that list prior to. Thank you. Uh, all right. The uh, motion carries. All right. Uh, item A12, Alderman Fleming. Hey, 12 is the sole source agreement with RoboThink LLC for youth classes and camps. The staff recommends approval of this sole source agreement um, for instruction of youth robotic and coding classes and camps. The expenses are paid for, for the, from the Chandler, Chandler Newberger Fund. Um, and the projected for 2019, staff is projecting 29,000 in revenues and 22,000 in expenses for action. Uh, is there a second? Yep. Second, but I also have a question. Um, sure. Uh, Alderman Braithwaite. Is there anyone here from Parks and Recs or whoever? Okay. Hey, how are you? Hi, I'm feeling fine. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you're feeling well. I think this is another one, Wally. I, sure. Unfortunately, I have not participated in the class, but I know that we have had other local groups we've had conversations with coders i think what if it isn't burdensome on staff i have this there's a shared collective that we need to spend more locally and so if for whatever reason like the previous bill that we're going with an outside vendor that staff just be forward thinking and provide the list of local groups who have been contacted there's a code academy, and I can't remember. Alvin Rainey, our other coders that had Evanston. Oh, here's, here's Lawrence. I'm sorry. No problem. Item are you? We're on the um, uh, class item. Which one? The class. A12. 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 Oh, the robo thing. Robo. Okay, yeah. Talking about local vendors. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good evening, Director. Good evening, sir. Sorry. No, no, he, he shared with us. Yeah, we do. I know. So I was just curious to know if there are any local uh, vendors that you or your staff reached out to before making this this decision. Um, thank you, through the chair um, and the committee, Alderman Braithwaite, um, <clears throat> Lawrence Hemingway, Director of Parks and Rec. Um, so with the robo thing, so I, this this conversation came up last year during our athletics um, <clears throat> uh, review. And I, I shared with the uh, council at the time, there are several programmatic um, options or, or programs that we offer. And what we were doing over the course of the next three years, starting last year, that we were bidding out all of these programs for local participation. Um, we had the discussion around athletics last year. Um, this one specifically is a, um, <clears throat> Robo, RoboThink is a robotics STEM camp. And this particular camp, um, the, the, the group or the, the, the uh, company that runs this, this is their specialty. Um, we do other STEM programming with local folks um, and with local partners. And um, we did not bid this one out yet, but Robo this one is on the list to be bid out next year. And I think I shared with the council last year that of all of our programmatic options, we're going to be bidding these things out over a three-year cycle. I'm doing a three or four a year. Um, this one fell into what we plan to bid next year specifically, but um, I was felt confident or about it because we do other STEM-based programming uh, with local partners. Uh, Alderman Rainey. I think, um, Alderman Braithwaite, you're thinking of um, the code, um, uh, the code project that came to CD. We did fund one. Yeah. yeah. But there were no robotic uh, provisions in that. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> but are you familiar with that fellow? I can't remember the name of the project. Yeah. Uh, just, I'm sorry to sidebar, but um, that company is no longer working. 
I asked about it earlier today. <laughs> so anyway, Carrie, sorry, moving on. <clears throat> Thank Is there you. any further discussion? Uh, all right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, please vote aye. aye. Any opposed? Uh, all right, the motion passes. Uh, all right, uh, moving on to items for consideration. Uh, item A3 is the Amazon credit card activity ending January 26, 2019 in the amount of $5,574.50. Uh, do I have a motion? Second. All right, uh, all those in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, and then one abstention. Uh, the motion passes uh, at a vote of three, zero, one. Uh, Alderman Rainey, could you please take item A4? A4. Uh, A4 is Lovelace Park uh, Tennis Court resurfacing. Oops, not on here. Uh, staff recommends city authorized city manager to execute a contract for Lovelace Park Tennis Court rehab with Chicagoland paving in the amount of $124,000. Move approval. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor vote aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? All right. Motion carries on a vote of uh, four to zero. Uh, all right. Uh, item A10, Alderman Braithwaite. Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to move for action item A10. It's the purchase of lease of city vehicles. Uh, staff is recommending City Council approve the purchase of eight vehicles for operations in the Public Works Agency and Administrative Services Department and the lease of four vehicles for operations in Administrative Services Department. No. Second. All right. Is there any discussion uh, of this item? Um, uh, Alderman Rainey. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to comment on the quality of this um, memo. And and also a couple of others that were in the um, in the consent agenda. Very high quality, I thought. Um, very detailed. Um, I really appreciated the detail and the explanation and the dates of purchase, et cetera, et cetera. And I I really appreciate that. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, is there any further discussion on this item? Um, all right. Uh, uh, item A10 having been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, vote aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Uh, that motion passes uh, four to zero. Uh, Alderman Fleming, could you please take item A11? Sure. A11 is a service provider agreement with the YWCA Evanston North Shore. Staff recommends we authorize city manager to sign a six month service provider agreement with the YWCA, which will cost $75,000. Um, this is for action. Second. All right, is there uh, any discussion on this item? Yeah, I do. Uh, Alderman Fleming. Yes, thank you. Um, so I have been trying to follow victim services since you know our last conversation of the budget several couple years ago. Um, and my concern, which I've voiced several times, is that we had lots of citizens here speaking about victim services. Um, I know it was a budgetary discussion, but we made the commitment that the services will remain the same even though we changed some staff and so on and so forth. Um, so over the last year and a half or so that we haven't gotten back up to where we were, um, and I applaud the staff for trying to make it work. Um, Director Thomas has been you know, really trying to, to make sure everything works, and I think um, probably for the most part it has. I hadn't heard any you know, devastating reaction, so thank you. But my concern in this contract is that um, from my understanding, the Y provides this service already in the city of Evanston. Um, the victim services advocates we have now do a lot of work with domestic violence. Um, and so I am concerned of some duplication of services. I'm also concerned with this contract if we start to place all of our victim, all of our domestic violence, or the majority or some or whatever, with the YWCA, what we will find is that hopefully we don't have an uptick in crime and therefore the current advocates we, we have in staff um, you know, might have lower case levels, which ideally would be fine, except for I'm concerned that that would then bring them back in front of the budget, um, back as part of the budget discussion. And we, I'm really concerned because, as I said, we made this commitment to all of the citizens who came here very concerned about us dismantling victim services, that, that it would all stay the same. And um, we haven't, in my opinion, kept that commitment. So I don't really have a question as much as I just had a statement. Uh, 
Michael. All right. Um, Alderman Rainey. So I want to make it very clear. I think that the city of Evanston is extremely fortunate to have the YWCA domestic violence services in our town. And the work they do, do is exemplary, and no one could match it. However, we are offering to pay $75,000 for all the services that we currently support financially and others support financially um, for what they already do, with the exception of one thing, and that is they do not reserve beds for Evanston residents, and they are offering in this service contract to reserve one bed. Our staff report says they are going to reserve two beds, but the contract says one bed. So that is the only difference that I can see. Um, I sent a note to both Alderman Suffered and Alderman um, Fleming saying that since this is a service contract, the way I, w I would deal with this is if they provide any services above and beyond the statistics they proposed in their CD proposal for this year, which I believe was $24,000, $25,000 um, that we uh, provided, if they provide any services in addition to that, then I think we should pay for that. But I don't think we should pay one nickel more um, than what they're already providing. If I mean, if they continue to provide 140 or 175 people with services, and that's what we're already paying for, to pay an additional 75,000 for no new services doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if they provide a bed for an Evanston resident, fine. We should we should provide payment for that, a fee for that. Um, but otherwise, I I don't know. Like Alderman Fleming said, just because we're giving them seventy-five thousand dollars, I truly hope that doesn't generate more domestic violence in this town for them to service. We have a service through the police department. They have a service. I hope we're we're coordinating in some way now. I mean, if we're not, shame on both of us. Um, so I I don't understand the $75,000 in any way, shape, or form. I am hoping it's a payment for services rendered. Um, it's not clear f to me from reading the, the provider agreement. Um, every single thing in the provider agreement is currently accounted for in the community development block grant proposal given to the Community Development Block Grant Committee earlier, later last year, and that is what we provided funds for, except for the reservation of a bed. So um, I, I don't know if we can hold this and amend it to make certain that we don't pay for services that are already being rendered. So I, I guess uh, I'll uh, thank you, Mr. Sof and I'll ask uh, Director Bonner Thomas Smith and also mm -hmm. Director Singer maybe to come to the mic. Um, I think we all agree that this is a very important issue. I mean, this is something that we discussed. I, I just want to remind our, our committee we discussed this at length in our last budget season. So it may help just to give a really short synopsis on how we got here from a budgetary standpoint because. This I, was something that I'm asking for a reminder because I'm sure that there are people watching. And then from Director Singer, I think it's really important that not only to for the members of the committee that ask the question, but also the public that are watching understand where there's going to be a distinction in services in terms of what you do, as Alderman Rainey so well stated, uh, in the community and what you'll do as it pertains to the city of Evanston's contract. Director. Sure. Good evening. Um, Alderman Suffering, um, Chair and Committee Members. Yvonne Thomas Smith, Director, Health and Human Services. Um, when the Council um, 
propose an elimination of um, a vacant uh, victim's advocate. Um, it was proposed to uh, add 75000 to the budget, Health and Human Services, to provide complementary services for the two full-time advocates that we currently have. Those complementary services, we're still working out with our uh, possible subcontractor vendor, but it kind of looks like um, right now we don't have 24-hour coverage. We don't have crisis intervention because the advocates <laughs> work um, a daytime shift, and um, the YWCA has the capacity to provide a crisis intervention. Um, with the bed, um, the YW has already committed one bed to the uh, Evanston Police Department for a victim, and they're ad adding an additional bed that they would hold aside for a victim that may need that service outside of um, the time that the advocates are working. Also, what we haven't worked out the finite details, but a lot of uh, the case management for new cases um, would allow the advocates to continue to commit to the time that they have in court. They have many cases where they're often found in court two to three days a week, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Karen's staff would be available to increase that capacity during the day when um, advocates are needed in after hours as well. Um, Karen Singer's staff has, have also committed to doing additional and needed training um, that has been a request of Chief Cook um, mm -hmm. for staff um, to do more assessment training around domestic violence intervention. So the Y really will complement um, and provide comprehensive services that we're unable to provide with two full-time advocates. Um, and can I ask just a clarification sure. on that? Because you've mentioned training three times. So I heard you say the Y is going to be providing ongoing training multiple times. Our current victim services staff, do they receive any type of training and supervision in the area of domestic violence? They receive supervision. They're required to have 40 hours of domestic violence training by law um, under the Illinois Domestic Violence Act. But in terms of ongoing training, um, since they've been under uh, my leadership for the last year, it's been really training around that um, and training that is relative to other staff for case management. Um, but they don't provide the training to staff. What the YWCA staff will provide training and roll call to police officers and first responders, which is very different than the training that the advocates receive themselves. And thank, for, thank you for that clarification. Sure. So that's something in addition that we wouldn't normally have but for the contract. That's correct. Thank Has the Y never trained any of our police officers? Not in recent years. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll, well, I'll any, you have your light on. Sorry. Well, can we, sorry. I guess I wanted to, oh, pardon. that was the first part of the question, and then I wanted uh, Karen to please talk about the distinction in services. Sure. Thank you. Good Alderman. evening. I'm Karen Singer, the CEO of the YWCA, um, and I'm here with Sandy Williams, who's the director of our services, domestic violence services. I think the the big piece is that we are at capacity. So we, you know, at our courthouse, we handle almost 400 orders of protection every year, and the CDBG funding is critical to all of our services. But we're at capacity, so we can't add services unless we have the staff to do it. And that's where the funding primarily goes. And Sandy, I don't know if you can add anything to that. Um, but we can't provide additional services. Our counselors are maxed out, and there just isn't the capability or the capacity. So. Thank you. Yes. We are working out the details with Avanda and the chief um, around the direct level of services, but I can guarantee you services will not be diminished in any way. We will hire the number of people we need to deliver the same, if not more, um, services to Evanston residents. Thank you. Um, Alderman Rainey, are you done? Uh, okay, Alderman Fleming. Did she answer oh, your questions, uh, um, yeah, Avanda just wanted me to answer. We also do um, perpetrator um, training as well. So uh, abusers who are mandated from um, the court, the Skokie Courthouse, are referred directly into a 26-week uh, um, intervention program. And we have two trained counselors um, that work uh, with how many people now are in that program? 
30. 30. Um, and we took that on uh, several years ago, and we have just recently added another group, um, and that is a state-funded program. And I guess my last question, Karen, and this is one of the reasons that I was really excited about the continued partnership with the YWCA is in often these situations, it's unfortunate that men are the folks who are victimizing the women. Mm -hmm. And you, I think within the last couple of years, have been doing a lot of just work around that. And if you can you share with me how, what, a, give us an update on what you're doing and how will that have an impact on the contract, if any? I'm going to toss it to Sandy, who okay. has more direct on the ground experience with that. Good evening, Sandy Williams, Domestic Violence Residential and Community Services Director. And to answer your question, Alderman Braithwaite, we have been um, expanding the services that we've provided. Uh, two, it's been twofold. So we've been working with professionals in the community and really having them uh, step up and work with us and be allies against violence. And then we are also expanding our work with perpetrators and youth who are potentially headed down that path. And we're doing that with our uh, advocates that are working with our prevention, with our perpetrators, as well as the individuals that are working in our prevention program. Thank you. Alderman Rainey. Do you see yourselves replacing our victim services people? Um, so do, do you, what do you mean by that? I mean, I mean, do you see yourselves taking over the jobs of our victim services department? Um, I see us as providing domestic violence services to Evanston residents um, that um, in prior years victim services provided. So is that a yes? Um, with that clarification, yes. Yeah. So is it, when do you see our current victim services personnel being replaced? Um, I'm going to toss that to Avanda. I don't, I think that's a council decision. I don't know well, how no, staff Well, no, I don't could, think it is. I think it's a budget decision. It's a budget think, decision that council votes on. Well, but Amy. I think the, I'm asking about the wise intent I, mean, I, I think that is their intent. I, we need to get to the bottom. You know, so we've been pussyfooting around this for so long. We had a meeting the other day in the Aldermanic Library mm -hmm. where Chief Cook said, I'm taking directions, I'll do whatever I'm told. I want to hear from the people involved what is going on because we're not let's talk straight to one another and find out what mm -hmm. the story is here I, I that's what i want to know are we going to lose people that people in our we're talking about perpetrators mm -hmm. let's talk about who the victims are relying on right now i want to know are they going to be replaced or not so here's a city manager, but I would well, like to think I, that... he was there when oh, yeah, was... Unfortunately, I wasn't, I'm not sure if I was at that meeting, but I would say this. I mean, any time staff is, yeah, I wasn't there. So uh, I'll wait for you to enlighten, but I think any time we make a decision to eliminate staff, that's something that we have to vote on unless staff is being fired for whatever reason. I'm not talking about being fired. I want to know, is it, is it, does, does the nope. YWCA see themselves moving in to replace our current victim services program. That's what I want to know. I guess what my answer didn't. Maybe you can. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, let me explain to you what I believe my direction from the city council is, that we, through the budget discussions, uh, decided to uh, allow the social services review that we're doing of all of our various social services to continue uh, through the spring into the early summer. Uh, the council uh, at that point said that uh, we'd have more or less to mid-year uh, to come back to you with our recommendations. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it was recommended by myself and uh, Director Thomas Smith that we needed additional resources to provide the level of service that the council was looking for. And so the council provided $75,000 for six months. Uh, my understanding, the direction of the council is that we will be coming back to you at mid-year uh, with an assessment as to where we are at with all of the social services that we provide, including the victim's advocates, and then at that time the city council will provide further direction. So when are you going to come back to us and tell us what your plan is, what your proposal is? I, I think, uh, historically, we're looking at the June, July time frame. 
is one, one, and, and that's looking at the broad brush of everything. So victim services is a part of that. That was the discussion uh, during the budget, and the council's ultimate decision was uh, to allocate funds for this agreement with the Y. The, the Y and the city talk regularly about services that we provide, I believe. Director Thomas Smith, yes. we spoke to the Y a year and a half ago yes. initially uh, about this, and it was not in the cards for fiscal 18 uh, when we were having the discussions in, uh, for fiscal 19. I believe you went back to the Y, asked them if they were still interested. Yes. The answer was yes. Um, we did not have any final direction from the council until the end of the budget process at the end of November. Uh, we then re began those discussions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And transition to right, so that was in the first part of December, and then uh, uh, we finalized things about sometime during the month of January. Yes. Uh, and then we're, we're here with the contract at your last meeting. So we're just trying to follow the council's direction uh, on this. Yes, as Alderman Rainey has said, this is something that has been discussed, but we outlined a plan that takes us to mid-year, uh, and that is the direction that we have from the council is to follow through with that plan. This is a component part uh, to help serve the residents of Evanston. All right, uh, there being no further discussion, uh, and the motion. I'm sorry, I have my light on. I had just oh. one more question. I mean, I, I had it on, then I turned it oh, off, okay. I think. Oh, go for it. Um, so my question actually has to do with the police training part. I'm, I'm sure that our police, probably you can't answer this, Ms. Singer, I'm sorry, probably, the, well, anyway, our police have had training, I know, in the past. So before this contract, who was, who was um, doing the police training for domestic violence? I don't know. Maybe uh, Chief Cook. Do you? Well, he yeah. Does he... And I realize Chief Cook, you're just here, so maybe that's a question I can get answered later because you might not know you weren't here either. No, I don't know. Yeah. But, but you, I understand we need more training. I guess I was just curious. I, I'm assuming in years past our police have had training yeah, in domestic violence. Training. Yeah, they get training. But, so I, you know, domestic violence is something that you have to constantly reiterate to these police officers so they can continue to do a good job uh, by the victims. It's ongoing. It's just like any other uh, type of uh, uh, litigation. You have to constantly in, embed vehicle pursuits, uh, use of force, domestic violence, those type of uh, incidents uh, consistently. I like to see the training done twice a year. Uh, that way we don't have skewed numbers when it comes to reporting. Uh, you know, the police officer will know exactly what he's supposed to do when he's on a domestic violence call. I know for a fact a lot of these police officers aren't following through uh, with, the, with the domestic <laughs> violence, and I'd like to see that training to keep them safe and out of trouble, uh, be more consistent. All right, thank you. Uh, Alderman Rainey. Well, uh, I think, Chief, you may need. I think if you check, um, and I, I don't have the details, but I think if you check the bills list, you will notice that we spend a lot of money on domestic violence training for our police department. And um, why our why hasn't been involved in police department training of domestic violence issues? I don't know. I know we send domestic cases out, you know, for yeah, training. We, and and if, you, if you read the Daily Bulletin, I mean, domestic violence is one of the major items of arrest on our domestic, on our uh, police bulletin. Yes, I mean, and, as, and that's, that's it's over as years. It's as frequent as uh, DUIs and, and uh, you know, I mean, it's just yeah, they, rampant. They, and that's because the police officers are making good decisions, but right. I know that's the type of uh, incident that you constantly have to train and reiterate your expectations through training what you expect from the police officer. Yeah. And when you see that on the, on the daily bulletin so frequently, it just see, makes common sense that we would have a domestic, we would have victim witness in our police department. That's where the domestic violence arrests are taking place. So, anyway, but definitely you need training, and it's definitely happening. And I, I don't know. It sounds like you don't think that it's been very effective, but I, I don't know that that's the case. But there is domestic violence training going on in our police department. I know that. So. 
And I, I certainly think that well, the Well, I, I, I was a policeman for 30 played. years in this town prior yeah. to leaving, I'm, and a, a police chief in another jurisdiction for eight years. So I follow domestic violence. I follow advocacy. Yeah. I'm for victims being right. safe. That's why uh, it's, it's paramount that these officers continually uh, receive training I, with respect to I the agree. latest techniques of domestic violence. And as a woman, I couldn't agree more, but I'm just telling you that you should take a look at, at where the training's been taking place. It, it has been taking place. Yes, ma'am. And Alderman Rainey, I, um, I'm glad if it has been taking place. Has I mean, been. we've had a partnership with the city PD for many, many, many years. We've been doing this work as long as they have. But you just said you haven't trained them for We years. have not recently been involved in any training. So I don't know where the training, uh, who is doing the training, but we are all too happy to ramp up that training um, in partnership. So I, I, I don't know who's been doing. You for, so I hope you do it. And I, I would like to make a request that we see um, some information regarding domestic violence training of our police department in the last two years. That's all I need. Because I know it's been going on. To say that it hasn't is just... We can compile that information and get it to you. Thank you. I don't feel the need to speak for staff, but I just want to make a point of clarification that I did not hear Chief Cook say that the, train, uh, the training was inadequate or that no. weren't trained. I just want I, di I didn't hear him say that either. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Thank I you. I didn't hear him say that. All right. Well, a full discussion having been had on item 11, uh, the service provider agreement with the YWCA Evanston North Shore. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 All opposed? No. Uh, all right. I believe that is a two to two vote. So this would move. I just heard two to one. I'm going to vote to send it to council, but I want to speak to it because I want to speak to it at council. Okay. okay. So we're looking at a three to one vote uh, in uh, favor, and that moves on to council. All right. Um, item A18 uh, is resolution 18R19, a loan agreement with Police Chief Demetrius Cook. Uh, and this is for action. Do I have move uh, approval? Second, second. All right. Uh, is there any discussion? Is there a mount? Um, is there a mount? Okay. Uh, I've got a question, and I'm not sure if it's uh, city manager, if you're the right person to ask. Um, so, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. So I appreciate. It. So uh, this agreement is um, Karen identical to Karen. The, Can uh, you just tap her just in case she has to stay for oh, council? Okay. We've asked her to stay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Alderman Braithwaite. Um, so uh, this is identical to the agreement that we had with the uh, fire chief. Uh, in, in that was for direction and, and, for drafting, yes. Okay. Uh, and so there are, there are three employees of the city who have these types of loans? That's correct. Um, two, two currently. Two currently, and then prospectively. Uh, does it make sense to look at expanding the program to other employees, or should we look at um, having these be eliminated after this current crop of loans goes away? What, what do other municipalities do? I understand that the value and importance of having key employees live in the city, and I um, think that there's probably, uh, if we had the money, um, reason to expand this deeper into the organization, but do you have an opinion on whether or not we should continue to do these, we should eliminate them, we should expand them, sure. uh, subject to funding? I, I think all have been suffered to members of the committee. It's a mixed bag of uh, what you'll see in different communities, uh, depending on uh, the, the real estate market at the time people are hired. Um, certainly a, a city manager position, that's normally uh, what drives it. Uh, I think on the police chief, fire chief, uh, having them in the community is always is a positive. And so depending if you're promoting from within, um, you know, people aren't usually interested in, in moving at that point. If you bring someone in from the outside, I think Chief Scott was an unusual occurrence where he very much wanted to move to the community when he became fire chief. So I think it is a mixed bag, and I think it just depends on what the community and the council thinks was appropriate at okay. any given time. Uh, I mean, I'd like us to have that discussion on, uh, I don't know what the appropriate committee, if it would be administration public works, to have that discussion at a time when the agenda is light um, about 
incentivizing living in Evanston for a larger range of employees. And I'm sorry, I meant to speak to that second point. Uh, uh, this committee, I think, has talked about that over the course of my years as city manager, probably maybe once or twice, uh, where we've looked, I think we even did a survey of, of employees asking if we provided some financial incentive, would they be interested in relocating? Um, I don't know if there's anybody in the room that remembers that, but we can go back and, and try to, it was five or six years ago. Um, okay. And the response we got from police officers and firefighters was that there was not an interest at that time. So that's normally who you would, would offer that to, what other communities uh, have looked at as providing some incentive for your, your public service employees, police, fire, public works. All right. Is this so usually part of the uh, pre-employment discussions or not is it normal for this? Well, not, not, for, not for, uh, it's a part of a pre-employment discussion for the senior managers, but for uh, others, it's not necessarily, um, you know, we have, the city has two apartments here on this property, uh, which we have tried to get uh, uh, any city employee to take. And I believe, Ms. Dorley, we've been unsuccessful. We um, just approved it. We did just approve uh, one tonight. Oh, just one tonight? Yep. So up until tonight, we've been unsuccessful. <laughs> but uh, uh, we'd be happy to come back at a future meeting. Okay, great. Uh, Alderman Rainey? Well, could we do a survey on the employee newsletter <coughs> and ask the question? Would people be interested in an incentive to sure. be here? I mean, would that be of interest to you? To me, yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to know. I, I mean, I, it's clear from a policy, like the policy decision is that there's value in having employees live in Evanston. There's a question of how much funding there is to provide meaningful subsidy of that goal, uh, but also, um, you know, how deep into an organization do you go? What levels do you provi provide it at? It, do the, what are the costs, and the monetary costs and the actual benefits? And that's like a larger discussion, but I would be interested uh, in knowing what uh, current employees think. And, uh, but the real question is for prospective employees, because uh, if it's a tiebreaker for a talented uh, prospective employee between two communities, I'd like us to win the tie. Um, so uh, I'd love as much information as possible. Uh, Alderman Braithwaite. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I guess just so we're giving our city manager little directions before we open up the can of worms, it makes sense to me and over the years for our to the staff that are for our first responders. So it makes sense that our chief of police is in close proximity whenever there's an emergency. It makes sense that our fire chief is in close proximity. I think for our other staff who uh, who work the traditional hours of nine to five with the exception of special events and activities, that that's a bonus. And that's a quality of life decision that they all have to make based on their salary. So I think my concern is, particularly going into this budget season, uh, members of the committee, is if we're opening that can of worms, whether it's a survey or any type of poll, we should be clear on where is that money going to come from. And that's the one thing that makes me uh, a little bit cautious about opening up that conversation. So I think if we're going to do it, then there better be a designated pool of funds should we get a large response. And if not, then we keep it as a wish list and maybe as a future goal. Um, but that's, that's just my thought. Well, I, don't, I don't think it hurts to get the information as to whether there would be interest on the part of current employees, and then we could talk about Fair its enough. value for recruiting, and then the third thing we talk about is how and uh, if we would be able to fund it. So, and, um, and if I may just ask an additional question: Is the council thinking rental as well as home ownership, or just home ownership, or I, look at all? I would say rental and home ownership because people, don't want people might not want to purchase. I mean, and we don't have enough to help necessarily people purchase. But if we can help someone with a security deposit or something, that might make a difference. Um, but I would say rental and okay. purchase. If for the survey purposes. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. And I, I think it's really just a matter, and uh, not to be the dead horse, but like, I mean, there are a lot of jobs where there's value in having the person who's responsible for things and needs to respond on short notice, living within short notice response distance. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, we can talk about which positions in the organization that includes, but certainly. Um, but I, I think the first thing is to gauge interest and then figure out if we have the money to do it. So if we come back in the next month or two, that's sufficient? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Thank you. All right. Uh, any other discussion? Um, all right. So uh, item 18 um, has been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. Aye. 
Uh, any opposed? Uh, all right, that passes uh, for nothing. Uh, are there any other items for discussion uh, or communications? Do I, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we are adjourned.